Welcome to Standard Fairy Book Reviews. As usual, I'm Tina. Today I'm doing a book review of Where I End by Sophie White. This is a book from Erewhon Books. It's coming out September 24th. Uh, it was also released a couple years ago, I guess under a different imprint. It's a horror novella. I received this art from NetGalley in exchange for a fair review. First of all, yes, yes, I got a haircut. <laughs> Doesn't it look nice? <laughs> self-care some self-care self um the character in this book really needs some self-care uh yeah so <laughs> holy 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 shit do you like to be unsettled do you like thinking to the characters as you're reading no 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 please 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 don't do that uh yeah yeah okay you did <laughs> do you love an atmosphere so thick and dreary it nearly chokes you are you not afraid to leave your comfort zone then every pony do I have a book for you. A little book, a novella, a novella that 100% deserved to win the Shirley Jackson Award because it packs a damn punch. What is this book about? My mother. At night, my mother creaks. The house creaks along with her. Through our shared thin wall, I can hear the makings of my mother gurgle through her body, just like the water in the walls of the house. Teenage Elon has never left the island. Her silent bedbound mother is a wreckage, the survivor of a private disaster no one will speak about. Elon desperately wants to find a family, and when Sarah and her young child move to the island, Elon finds a focus for her relentless love. A horror story about being bound by the blood knot of family. <laughs> So this book could have been like horrifically disgusting, but the great thing about it is the restraint. It has a perfect balance of rouse your imagination, yet also explain things in detail. Of course, this is entirely a tolerance thing. Some people likely found this book extremely disturbing and others found it maybe pretty tame. But for me, it hit my thresholds exactly how I like them. I couldn't stop reading it just as I also had a sort of lump in my throat the whole time. What's fascinating about this book is the main character. She is so well done. So she's shunned by her small island community, abandoned pretty much by her father, and has been forced since a child to assist her grandmother in caring for her invalid mother. She has no education, no friends, no help. Her grandmother is not kind, and they also are extremely poor. She's had a raw hand dealt to her, so when the only shining light she's ever seen shows up in her life, no wonder she doesn't know what to do. <laughs> Her desire for love, for a parent to take care of her, gets confused with her sexual desire, something she's also never been able to express. The way this is handled is so realistic and understandable. She does stuff where you're like, no, don't do that. But you also understand why, because she hasn't been properly socialized into caring for herself or others. And the way that this is shown and not told throughout the text is expertly done. Like there's never a hint that she is aware that she thinks of things in a strange way compared to other people. She doesn't realize that she's had this, she doesn't realize that she's been denied kind of basic socialization. It's a great deep delve psychologically into how what a person who suffered as she has would think. It's fantastic. I can't really talk with the other characters too much because there really aren't a lot of them. <laughs> and one is just sort of a sleep deprived mother and the other, well, is also a mother, but to get into her would be major spoilers. You really should just experience that yourself. But yeesh, uh, body horror upon body horror. If you love body horror, you will like totally love this. It's not, it's not like gory. It's just like very in depth. It's very kind of detailed. <laughs> The atmosphere and setting are one of my favorites in horror. You know, desolate island in the sea. Yes, yes, please, all day. <laughs> of course, this is not an idyllic setting, far from it. And the little hints that are dropped that make it all the more chilling of a place serve to broaden it further. For example, mentions of past events, cultural tendencies of the people, things like that. The island is also almost as much of a character as the characters, as a great deal of the plot is tied to the island itself. Is the island causing the problems? You know, is it a cursed place or does the desolation just get into people's heads? We're not really sure. The writing is lovely and so immersive. I quote, if I may, <laughs> the island slices up from the ocean, thrusting skyward like the prow of a sunken ship. At the high end, the island runs out at sheer cliffs. At the low end of the island is a broad sandy beach. The sand is gray like iron fillings. This is great writing. Why? <laughs> because the imagery from the description really reinforces the tone. If you could indulge me for a moment here. So when I edit, I find a lot of writers sometimes forget that setting is just as important as plot. So if you want to reinforce a tone, especially in horror, it works especially well in this genre, you need to include descriptions that match it. 
so like slices, sunken ships, just the reader, something menacing. And iron fillings, you know, impart, well, discomfort or disgust. From the description that I read, we know this place is bad news because of the connotations or illusions her similes bring up in our heads. If she had just said, the, the gray island sits in the middle of the rough ocean with a cliff at one side and a beach at the other, that's very boring. <laughs> you don't get any kind of tone or atmosphere from that. I see this a lot when I'm editing, so I always suggest to people to use a metaphor or simile as an initial description, then a kind of more normal or like, you know, specific descriptor, and then another metaphor to kind of wrap it up. It's an easy way to impart tone and setting to allow them to reinforce one another. As another example, if you want to make it a happy island, you could say something like, you know, and following the same structure, the island sleeps on the ocean, bobbing like a baby in a bassinet. At the high end, the island holds a majestic cliff that reaches to the sky like fingers at prayer. At the low end, sandy shores are lapped by the clear water. The sand is gray like gosling feathers. <laughs> same setup, same island, different tone. Th there's some writing 101 for you, I guess. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, uh, back to this book that is fantastic. The prose is amazing and I love it. <laughs> now the ending, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but I thought it was perfect if you enjoy open-ended. <laughs> Despite the tone of the story and the events, it was also somewhat hopeful, I guess. By the end of the book, though, I was sitting there with my mouth open in absolute disbelief regardless, though. So and that's kind of what you want in a horror story, to be kind of like... <laughs> now, if you aren't all sensitive to stuff involving children, perhaps avoid this one. That being said, I am sensitive to that stuff, but somehow I could handle this book. So maybe give it a chance. It's not an easy read as it's very dark, quite sad, and definitely horrific, but it's also exceptionally written and utterly addictive. As I said, it's totally deserving of the award. I absolutely loved it. It blew me away. Totally blew me away. And I know I say that a lot, but no, this book was just, it was so wonderful. Anyway, uh, thank you so much to the publisher and to NetGalley for the eARC. I really appreciated it. I'm definitely going to be buying this one, aka asking for it for Christmas. <laughs> Uh, if you have read this book, because as I said, it came out a couple years ago and this is like a reprint or something, uh, let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it. I clearly really liked it, so I don't want to hear anything bad about it. No, I'm kidding. I don't care. You can say your opinions. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, yeah, so thanks.